Sam, an accomplished astrologer, works at the observatory of his small town. Sam takes a habitual pause every day at noon, and his co-workers help him readjust the telescope to view his favorite star, Linda, his childhood love. Linda's an elementary school teacher, and even her students have gotten in the habit of waving to the sky at noon. Linda signals Sam to call her later, she's got big news. Excitedly, she reveals to Sam she's the teacher that's been chosen to represent the district at a school in New York. She'll be traveling there for two months, and while Sam congratulates her, she can tell he's unhappy about it. Linda tries to convince him to come with her, there's so many new things they could see and experience in New York, but Sam believes he's got everything he needs in his hometown. The only things he wants to see are Linda and the sky, and they both reside there, but Linda hates the idea of having not moved anywhere in her 20 years of life. She tries to convince Sam that if he tells her to stay, she will, but of course, she doesn't keep her word and flies out anyway. Two months later, Sam prepares a welcome party for Linda's return. As he's completing the final touches, he finds Mr. Green, Linda's father, sitting in his kitchen, much to his confusion. Sam's about to go pick Linda up from the airport, but Mr. Green stops him, proceeding to read a letter that Linda sent, essentially breaking up with him. Sam doesn't even wait till Mr. Green finishes reading, he speedily packs and flies out to New York. Despite him being unfamiliar with the city, Sam manages to track down Linda's apartment building. He presses the buzzer, but it sticks down, playing the buzzing sound non-stop. Sam hears Linda yell out to a man she refers to as Honey to answer the door. The man wakes, sounding pissed and cursing at the constant buzzing sound. Sam panics upon hearing him, hiding behind the door when he comes out to check. He leaves the building, looking up at their apartment in a kind of shocked disbelief, when he's nearly run over by a motorcyclist. Sam notes the building directly across from their apartment is abandoned, and decides to climb up so he can get a better view of what's happening inside. He nearly falls through the rickety building's floor, but it's worth it, as he finally gets a chance to see Linda and her new boyfriend. Sam sets up shop in the abandoned building, crafting a home and a routine for himself. He watches Linda and her boyfriend, who he's nicknamed Tarzan, every morning. Sam even keeps track of their interactions on graphs and charts that rate Linda's responsiveness to him. He shoots a call to Carl back in his hometown, asking him to sell his truck for some extra cash and for a favor. Sam receives the special lens he'd asked Carl to mail over, and gets to work setting up a camera obscura that points directly into Linda's apartment. He's astonished by how well it works. Sam's lost in the blurry image of Linda on the wall, talking to it as if she were really there, telling her a story he'd heard on the news about fainting goats, something he knew she'd find funny. He gets to work, painting the walls with a fresh coat of white paint, allowing Linda to come to life in brighter colors and sharper details. While tinkering with telescope parts at night, Sam battles the many cockroaches in his building, catching and relocating them to a homemade habitat. When he glances up at the camera, he spots a leather-clad person lurking around Linda's apartment. The person seemingly notices him from across the street and heads towards him. The motorcyclist breaks into the abandoned building via the roof, giving Sam, who's armed himself with a giant wrench, a fright. Pulling off their helmet, it's revealed that it's a woman. She looks around, wordlessly observing Sam's setup while making herself comfortable as she strings her own lights around the place, ignoring all his questions about who she is and where she came from. The woman shushes him, so Linda and her ex-fiancé don't hear. She introduces herself as Maggie, announcing she'll be staying with him for a while. She warns him not to come onto her, mess with her things, or get in her way, and they'll get along fine, before she slams a door in his face. The next day though, Sam covertly searches through Maggie's things, finding random objects like a toy squirt gun, and a Ziploc bag of strawberries that have begun to grow mold. Maggie returns home with loads of bugging equipment that Sam immediately questions her about, though she figures it's obvious that the equipment is for the purpose of bugging Linda's apartment. Sam protests, calling it an invasion of privacy, what a hypocrite. She F finds it humorous that Sam thinks Linda will leave Tarzan to go back to him. Sam's convinced, however, that the couple are going to break up tonight, explaining to Maggie he's been using his skills as an astronomer to find patterns in their relationship. Sam's sure that things will be over tonight, it's all in the data, but Maggie thinks he's pathetic. She retorts that the only way Linda would ever go back to Sam is if a blast of semen catapulted her out the window and into their building. Maggie finally sets up the equipment and tunes in. Sam gets curious, asking Maggie if she can hear them and what they're talking about. But she plays hard to get, making him beg before she lets him hear. The sounds of Linda and Maggie's ex making love blares over the speakers. Sam's horrified, thinking Linda must be in pain, he's never heard her scream like that. Maggie makes sure to clarify her ex is quite the lover, apparently very well endowed for a Frenchman. Sam's mortified as he listens to the man make love to Linda in French, and Maggie doesn't help the situation, teasing Sam by asking if he'd like to grab his charts to input this data. She tries to take advantage of his moment of weakness, offering Sam to join her in trying to destroy them instead of being a passive observer, but he refuses, claiming he won't stoop to her level. Maggie shrugs, turning the volume up on the surround sound, further torturing Sam. Maggie offers Sam a platter of Slim Jims and colorful candy, tuning into Linda and Tarzan to see what their dinner menu is tonight. 
Maggie recognizes the squab recipe. He marinates it in a lemon wine sauce and braises it with sugar. Maggie can almost recite their conversation as if it's lines from a movie she's seen a hundred times, mocking her ex's accent when he claims it's a recipe an old man gave him once, instructing him to only prepare it for the woman he loves. Maggie reveals he used the recipe for a catered event of over 500 people. Sam tunes in too, as he hears him make a comment about enjoying watching Linda eat, and he's sure the situation will start going south now. Linda hates people watching her eat. Instead, he tells Linda a story about fainting goats, the very same story Sam imagined telling her. He kisses her, knocking all the food off the table, and he and Linda start making love. Sam's had enough, finally agreeing to work with Maggie and getting her revenge. Maggie instructs Sam to nudge her ex, Anton, while he walks along the road, and she uses the distraction to pick his pockets. But as they're about to make their escape, Sam loses his temper and goes against the plan, confronting and assaulting Anton in the street. He quickly escapes with Maggie. While draining his bank account, Sam questions how far Maggie intends to go with her plans. Maggie admits she doesn't necessarily want him to be physically hurt. Rather, she just wants to see him lose every scrap of dignity till he becomes a shell of the man he once was. Sam considers maybe he shouldn't have assaulted Anton, having sympathy for him as a man in love. Maggie asks Sam to define love, since he uses the word so often. Sam describes love as finding something in life that fills a person up, ridding them of a constantly hollow feeling but gives up halfway through his explanation, feeling as though it's difficult to verbalize. Maggie tells Sam a story about a dog her father had that once got sick. When he'd taken it to the vet, he was told maggots laid eggs in the dog's butt, and nothing could be done. Maggie claims her father took the dog home, reached inside it and began picking the maggots out with his hands, one by one. In the end, the dog outlived her father, and that story is what defines love for her. Sam snorts, thinking Maggie isn't as tough as she pretends to be. Maggie and Sam continue their splurge with Anton's credit card. She buys expensive jewelry, then visits a flower shop, purchasing multiple arrangements that she sends to her nana, who will surely get a kick out of it. Maggie's plan is to make it appear as though Anton is cheating. She pays a street performer to put lipstick on his monkey, and during the performance, the performer gets the monkey to attack Anton as he walks by the square. Maggie perks up when she notices Anton's returned home. She and Sam assemble to watch how everything plays out. Linda greets Anton happily at first, flirting with him. But as they start kissing, Sam notices her facial expression change as Linda spots the lipstick. Linda confronts him about it, and Maggie turns up the volume. Anton gives Linda the story about the monkey kissing him. But instead of getting mad, she laughs at the way he tells it. Sam and Maggie jeer at the screen like a dissatisfied audience, bitter at the way Anton and Linda have literally started monkeying around and being affectionate instead of arguing. Sam doesn't think their plan is going well, but Maggie offers him a drink, announcing they're going in tonight. Maggie and Sam break into Linda and Anton's apartment shortly after they leave for their trip to the Hamptons, although they're both drunk. Maggie tosses her panties to Sam, instructing him to plant them in the couch, but don't make it look too obvious. She's leaving them as evidence for Linda to find. Maggie stumbles around, grabs a bottle of wine and some glasses, pouring them another round of drinks before she starts planting credit card receipts around the house. She gets distracted by a portrait of Anton hanging on the wall, a photo she likely took. Maggie scowls at it, scooping up a couple items off the shelf that she claims are hers. Sam fiddles around in the bathroom with Linda's perfumes and skin products, relishing her scent. He takes the moment to brush his hair with Anton's brush before dipping it in the toilet, while Maggie rifles through the closet. Sam's in the middle of jokingly role-playing Anton when he swears Linda passes behind him. He turns around to find Maggie wearing Linda's dress, one very familiar to him, and he's left speechless. The two stumble into each other's arms, a faraway look on both their faces. Maggie shows Sam a photo of Anton and Linda, and the two pose with the frame, as if trying to recreate the selfie. When Maggie turns around, she and Sam kiss deeply, getting swept away in the moment. The two collapse on their ex's bed, making love then and there. The next morning, Maggie wakes Sam. Sam wants to talk about what happened last night, but Maggie dodges it, claiming there's nothing to talk about. When Sam insists, Maggie cuts him down with a razor-sharp insult. Sam silently dresses, cleaning up the kitchen as Maggie ordered. Maggie starts feeling guilty about snapping at Sam. After a lengthened silence, Sam admits last night was out of character for both of them, proposing perhaps they should quit this ridiculous plan. Maggie sighs, confiding that if they stop, Linda will end up the same way she did. Anton will make her feel like she's the only woman in the world. Then three weeks later, she'll find a pair of panties in the couch and learn she was just being used. Sam understands where Maggie's coming from, sympathizing with her pain. He distracts Maggie by complaining he can never see the left side of Linda's face because of a stupid table in the dining room, and gets her to help him move it, putting her back on track. Sam visits Anton's restaurant to apply for the open position of dishwasher, however Anton doesn't give him a chance, turning him away without a second look or a reason, 
Besides not liking Sam's face, Sam turns to leave but adjusts the centerpiece on one of the tables, making it perfectly centered before he leaves. Anton notices this and stops him, asking why he'd do such a thing. Sam responds it was just something he had to do, and Anton acknowledges him for that, admiring this desire for perfectionism at heart, something he relates to. Sam lands the job, and on his first day he smashes a plate on purpose, getting himself sent outside to mop up. Anton observes him while mopping, commending his hard work and offering that he take a break. He hands Sam a towel to dry his hands, and while Sam's distracted, he punches him in the face, announcing he knows exactly who he is. Sam had worn sunglasses, but Anton insists he never forgets a face. Anton assumes Sam is a down-on-his-luck guy who assisted him purely because he seemed rich. Anton comforts him, helping Sam up from the floor, assuring him he'd been homeless and starving once too. Anton commends Sam, announcing that he likes men who fight for what they want, but threatens him with intense bodily harm should he ever attack him again. Maggie can't fathom what Sam's thinking is as she ices his face. Sam admits he didn't have a plan, he simply wanted to face the man who is like God in his mind. Anton seems a little more human now, and Sam's surprised to find that Anton seems to like him. Sam shares a story with Maggie about the time Linda comforted him after he fell off the jungle gym as a child, while he loads up a bunch of children's spray guns with a few drops of perfume concentrate. Maggie hands out money to the kids, showing them a photo of their target while she responds with her own story of a group of ducklings who imprinted on a park gardener. Every day they followed the gardener around on his lawnmower, thinking he was their mother, and Sam chimes in, relating that imprinted feeling to how he feels about Linda, as though she's branded on his brain. Maggie ruins the ending for him by telling him that one day, the gardener had forgotten the ducklings were there and threw his lawnmower into reverse, promptly ending them. Anton walks past and the couple perk up, watching their mercenary band of children as they attack him with their squirt guns. At home, Linda shows Anton's perfume-soaked clothing to him, demanding an answer. Anton tells her the truth, children attacked him with squirt guns, but it's obviously such a ridiculous explanation that Linda thinks he's lying. Linda recognizes the perfume, it's an expensive designer brand she used to wear, a brilliant added detail that makes Maggie high-five Sam. Added to that, Anton claimed a monkey put lipstick on his collar last week, so Linda's beginning to feel stupid and suspicious. Linda begs Anton to promise her that if he ever were seeing someone else, he'd tell her. That way perhaps they could work something out, but she wouldn't be able to recover from it if he is lying to her. Anton tries comforting her with a line about him preferring to make love to a steak than a hamburger, Linda being the steak, of course, but both she and her audience roll their eyes at that. Maggie's convinced Linda is close to leaving him. Maggie and Sam continue watching them throughout the night, as if the drama were dinner and a movie. Linda's expression belies her unhappiness with Anton, but Sam and Maggie enjoy nothing more. They mockingly lip-sync lines to Linda and Anton's dialogue when the audio of their party blocks out their voices, running a bit where Linda breaks up with him for Sam, her Milky Way man. Anton pops into the kitchen for a much-needed smoke break, and Sam asks him how he likes America if he ever misses home. Anton compares himself to Superman, explaining France was like Krypton, everyone was Superman there. In France, he's not special, everyone can cook, everyone has a French accent. But in America, which is like Earth, he's truly Superman. He comes off as unique and charming to bankers, and sensual and exotic to women. Life is easier for him here, because he's special, and it's granted him the chance to grow in ways he'd never managed to do back home. He encourages Sam that he, too, has opportunities available to him, even though he's not French, making the point that yesterday he was jobless but today, He's not, a small step up, but a step nonetheless. He remarks that through his hard work, soon Sam will have a place and a girlfriend. Sam snaps that he does have a girlfriend, and she's a wonderful woman. He questions whether Anton feels that women only use men for their money, but Anton doesn't completely agree, insisting women want men who take what they want. Leaning closer, Anton confides his current girlfriend had a boyfriend when they met. He'd innocently asked her about him, and she'd had a host of wonderful things to say about how devoted and gentle he was, so Anton started subtly probing, and in no time, they were together on his couch. Anton believes she'd wanted him to force her away from her ex, that she wanted the battle, confessing that even as she was crying, she was kissing him. Sam crushes a wine glass with his bare hands when Anton tells him Linda came like a rocket later, but luckily, they're interrupted before he snaps. Cecile bursts in the back, announcing that the famous food critic for the Times, Harold Matheson, is here tonight. Maggie arrives at the restaurant with a package for Sam, double-checking if he's sure about his plan. He tells Maggie about the critic and she's stoked, congratulating him for taking such a huge step. Anton bursts into the back kitchen, reiterating to all the staff that everything must be perfect tonight. As he retreats, Maggie hands an eager Sam his package, proudly noting she's created a monster. Matheson waves Anton over, inquiring about the fact that he received a more prestigious bottle of wine than he'd ordered. Anton reveals he took the liberty of upgrading him with something from his private reserve, and the attempts at getting on his good side don't go unnoticed by Matheson, who expresses his gratitude. 
Anton spots a cockroach running around, which he ducks to grab in a very awkward-looking moment, but quickly smooths over, continuing his conversation. The roach crawls up Anton's sleeve. Anton struggles to talk about his hometown while trying to fight the cockroach off, but looking around, he spots other guests noticing them too. When he looks down at Matheson's plate, he's mortified to see a roach sitting on his spoon, and feels sick when Matheson takes a bite. Soon the restaurant bursts into screaming panic as patrons and chefs experience roaches crawling all over them in swarms. All hell breaks loose, but Sam peacefully whistles while he continues working, as if nothing's happened. Sam and Maggie cackle like supervillains on their way home, doubling over with laughter. When they check in with the couple, even Linda can't help but snicker as Anton gives her the story about the roaches. He's furious about the possibility of losing his restaurant. Linda tries to assure him they'll get by, offering that she still has her job. But Anton doesn't want to hear that, a teacher's salary is minuscule. He wonders what she'd do if he lost all his money, and couldn't afford nice things like the apartment anymore. Linda offers that she'd sit on the curb with him all day, selling pencils and making love in their cardboard box all night. Moved by her words, Anton grabs a box off the shelf. Sam informs Maggie Anton's grabbing an engagement ring, a ring Maggie's already familiar with, and the couple watch in horror as Anton proposes to Linda in French, and she accepts. Sam and Maggie head out for a drink to drown their sorrows, but sense an intruder upon their return. Surprisingly it's Maggie's grandma, Nana, who's tracked her down after receiving 50 pounds of flowers, earrings, perfume and a TV. Maggie's spunky Nana lovingly rebuffs her for not calling her mother or contacting her in two months, and then greets Sam, who she mistakenly thinks is Anton. Maggie nods, giving Sam the signal to go along with the ruse as Nana takes the couple out for custard. Maggie and Nana playfully jeer at each other when Nana realizes she needs to get home, it's getting late. Nana wants to take a photo of the couple before she leaves, instructing the two to get closer and act natural. Nana asks Anton to give Maggie a kiss for the photo, and at first Sam tries to feign it with a kiss on the cheek, but Nana isn't having that, goading him to do better. Sam gives Maggie a peck on the lips, but the camera's flash doesn't go off, so they have to kiss again. This time, their kiss is deep, passionate, and lasts a few seconds well after the shot is taken, both of them briefly losing themselves in each other for a moment. As Sam and Maggie walk Nana to her bus, Sam wonders how long she was in their home before they showed up. Nana claims she wasn't there too long, just long enough to tidy up and listen to a soap opera on the radio. Sam and Maggie are briefly confused about what radio, but quickly realize she's talking about the bug transmissions, eagerly asking her what happened on this episode of the soap opera. She recounts the story of a Frenchman who's returned home to a woman who's upset. The woman accuses the Frenchman of having an affair. He denies it at first, but then she reveals panties she found in the couch, along with some other evidence. She mentions something about monkeys that Nana couldn't follow, and after a period of silence, the Frenchman confesses, to the shock of both Sam and Maggie. Nana explains the Frenchman confessed to having an affair with an investor, then started crying and begging for forgiveness, and the story ends with the woman cursing him and walking out. Sam and Maggie rush home, fixing the camera and watching as Anton fumbles around, panicking, thinking every phone call is Linda. The doorbell rings and it's Mr. Green, who's appeared to recite Linda's pain-filled Dear John. But he doesn't even get three lines in before simply deciding to punch Anton instead. Sam and Maggie rejoice, amazed at having fulfilled their goal without even being there to witness the pivotal moment. Maggie wonders what they're going to do now, but her face sinks when she realizes Sam is thinking about his next move and getting Linda back, contemplating which hotel she went to. Maggie bitterly encourages him to go, suddenly in a hurry for him to leave. Sam wonders where the rush and hostility has come from. Maggie plays it off like she's just trying to push him towards reclaiming Linda. Sam wants to say goodbye, but Maggie just stares at him, making a face as though she's waiting for him to leave. Sam expresses disappointment in Maggie as he leaves. Just as he arrives outside Linda's hotel, he witnesses the concierge kicking Anton out, sternly stating Linda doesn't want to see him. Sam tries to escape, but Anton spots him, pulling him into small talk. At first Anton tries to pretend like everything's great, but soon buckles, admitting everything is falling apart, and he feels hollow inside. Anton questions whether Sam has found a place to live yet. Sam admits he hasn't, and Anton invites him to stay with him. Anton considers him to be a good person and a hard worker, praising him for how collected he appeared to be amongst the chaos last night at the restaurant. Anton begs him to come back to his apartment for a drink and do him the favor of easing his loneliness. Sam agrees to one drink, but several bottles later, he's trying to convince Anton to stop. As Anton opens a bottle of Margox, he laments that he doesn't know how Linda found out about the affair, explaining he only slept with her to secure the loan for his restaurant. It meant nothing, he barely came, and he thought of Linda the entire time. Anton insists he's going to get her back, and Sam listens to his rants, which partially drown out the sound of Maggie throwing a tantrum across the street. Anton gets ready for bed, announcing he has modeling work tomorrow, and Sam tries to leave again, but Anton desperately begs him to stay, bribing Sam with more food and wine. 
While Anton's gone, Sam runs to the window and whispers an apology to Maggie. He hadn't intended to end up with Anton, but when he saw how pathetic he was, he just couldn't leave him. Anton finds Sam by the windowsill and kneels beside him, thinking he's praying. That night, Maggie breaks into the apartment and plants rotting strawberries under Anton's pillow. She pauses, looking at Sam while he sleeps, and when he wakes, startled, Maggie warns him to stay out of her way. Sam finds Linda at her new school, and she's ecstatic to see him, running into his arms with a big hug. The couple chat while walking, and Linda can't help but lament how terrible her last few days have been, though she quickly shuts herself up, realizing how selfish it'd be to talk about her relationship problems with the guy she dumped. She confesses she misses Noon, that she doesn't truly know why she left someone as kind and honest as Sam. Sam squirms at her compliment, admitting Linda doesn't know everything about him. Maggie, who's at the park, notices the couple. Linda spots the street performer with the monkey attacking a passerby, and briefly ponders the legitimacy of Anton's story. She distracts herself, asking Sam to kiss her, and he obliges, but as they pull away, Sam looks perturbed. Linda reveals she got a stud, and Sam realizes there are things he still doesn't know about Linda either. The two agree to meet at her hotel tonight before Linda's forced to return to work. Sam's about to head over to Maggie when notices Anton cursing the bailiffs who are carrying his furniture out the house. Anton rants about the credit card company, imploring Sam to help him find his other shoe for his photo shoot when Sam points out his face. Going to the mirror, Anton sees he's broken out into a rash, it's a chronic allergy to food or mold, like shellfish and strawberries. Anton bursts into tears, sobbing as the last of his value, his looks, are gone. Maggie scowls at the pathetic sound of his mewling, muting him. Sam confronts Maggie, demanding they talk, but she deflects by mentioning his previous date with Linda. Sam challenges that this isn't about Anton anymore, but Maggie insists she hates to let him out of her sight, brushing past Anton with her motorbike, startling him. Sam chases after Anton, who insists he must see Linda tonight. He cannot bear the thought of her seeing another man. Anton confesses that even when the world was crashing down around him, he had the most extraordinary times with Linda, as though none of it mattered. And even though they've only known each other a few months, he loves her. Anton asks how long Sam's been with his woman. And without thinking, Sam answers a few weeks, then realizes he's thinking about Maggie, not Linda. Upon this realization, Sam starts to run off, about to leave Anton to his own devices when he hears a motorcycle approaching. Sam spots a motorcyclist, whom he thinks is Maggie, speeding towards Anton, and pushes Anton out of the way and accidentally down some stairs. Anton yells for Linda as they load him into the ambulance, while Sam apologizes profusely. Maggie sees Sam bringing Anton home, tending to him, before staring into the camera at her. Sam visits her, confronting Maggie and telling her what happened. He insists this isn't about Anton anymore, that this is about them. He confesses he loves her, and he knows she loves him, she's crazy about him, why else would she have been at the park this morning? Anton wasn't there, she was watching him. Maggie keeps denying, claiming she went to the park for photos of Sam and Linda that would finish breaking Anton's heart for sure. Sam snatches the envelope from her, proposing to handle this last task himself if that's what she really wants. Sam confronts Anton, badgering and interrogating him as to what he did, as surely he must have done something terrible to deserve all this. He insults Anton, calling him broken and repulsive, hoping this satisfies Maggie, and again, badgers him to confess how he's hurt people. Anton confesses he cheated on Linda, but Sam insists he confess about how he was using her, just like he did Maggie. Anton sobers, realizing he never told him about Maggie, and Sam confesses to being the Milky Way man, claiming he knows everything. Anton tries swinging at Sam, and a fight ensues. The two scuffle, destroying what little furniture is left in Anton's apartment. But mid-fight, Anton stops. Anton admits Maggie was like his angel, who brought him to America, and he was nothing before he met her, just a waiter in Paris. Anton admits to using her, but he didn't think it mattered at the time, because he was convinced he'd grow to love her. Anton was convinced that if he could just love Maggie, everything would be okay, the shame would go away. But he never did, you can't choose who you love, and Anton loves Linda. Anton wonders who Sam thinks he is, but Sam admits he's nobody to nobody, as he drags himself out of Anton's apartment. Maggie runs outside, searching and calling out for Sam, but he's already gone. Sam heads to Linda's apartment to talk while Maggie appears in front of Anton, quietly removing the strawberries from his pillow. She sits next to him in silence, and Anton tries to apologize, but she shushes him, insisting that all he says is that they're even. He obliges. Linda's understandably upset at Sam after he confesses what's been going on, and she eventually goes back to Anton to care for him. Sam's on a flight back home, struggling to find a comfortable sleeping position, when he notices the envelope from Maggie's still in his pocket. Opening it, he finds none of the photos are of him and Linda, as she'd claimed, but of him and Maggie. He looks over them, then glances up at the episode of Lassie playing on the plane, and suddenly he realizes something. Maggie looks around the dilapidated building as she gathers her stuff to leave, reminiscing, when suddenly Sam appears behind her. Sam recalls the episode of Lassie where she was accused of a crime she didn't commit, and the sheriff was hunting her down to put her to sleep. 
The little boy found out the ranger was coming and told Lassie to go away, but she wouldn't leave the boy, so the boy told her he never liked her, that he hated her, that she was a bad dog. As he closes the distance between them, Sam admits Lassie was very sad, but eventually, Lassie came home. Maggie jokingly asks if the little boy made it with Lassie afterwards, and Sam sarcastically answers yes, before pulling Maggie in for a deep and passionate kiss. 